All right, Gadgeteers, welcome back. Today we have a vintage computing story. So I recently bought a computer from a gentleman named Brian here in my town. And I'm going to show you the computer that I got. It is a Pentium 166. We're going to go through this entire computer together. Before I set it up, I'm going to open the, the case up and let you see the innards and what I've got inside. And then what we'll do is power it up, get it all set up, and I'm going to show you what software is on it and what still needs to be done. Now, the final mission that I'm trying to get done is to install my wife's favorite childhood game, Putt-Putt Moon. So I'm going to work on that. Also, I have another game that she really likes. Looks like, oh, here it is. The Sims 2. Now this one is a full pack. It has The Sims 2, The Sims 2 Nightlife, and The Sims 2 Celebration stuff. And there's already a bunch of stuff on this computer. So without further ado, let's open it up and see what we got inside. All right, before we tear the unit down, let's have a look at the exterior of the case. So on the front here, I have two open five and a quarter bays. I have a DVD writer, but also will act as a CD-ROM player. I have a standard 1.44 megabyte floppy drive, which is important. There is a small reset button on the surface. There's also a power button, and there is what appears to be an HDD activity LED, so the hard drive, and there's also an LED here that is for power. Now it says Intel inside Celeron, but it's actually not a Celeron. It's an original Pentium 166. This is not too far off the third computer that I own, which was a DX4100. So it was a 486 DX4100. Of course, this one will be considerably faster. I remember back in the day I bought the DX4100 and my friend bought a Pentium 133. So on the back of the case is a standard AT power supply. We'll have to get inside and see what the wattage is for that. We also have a plug-in for a monitor, which I most likely will not need to use. And here we have the plug-in for the power supply itself. Now the the keyboard uses a standard, I believe it's a one, two, three, four, five pin uh, DIN connector. There is a port here that is a 25 pin serial port. We have a nine pin serial port. We have a parallel port. We have a video card, which is a, a Dell S3 Verge card. It's a PCI. We have a modem which I most likely will take out uh, and replace with a network card. So at some point I'm going to get a 100 megabit network card to put in this system so that I can do a uh, connection to my network. And I'll explain what I'm going to do with that networked connection when we get to the software portion of the video. Here we have a Vintage Original Sound Blaster 16 card, which will work with DOS and Windows 3.1 and pretty much any Windows version out there. Uh, the person who built this included this so that it would be compatible because he set up a dual boot with DOS 6.22 and Windows 3.1. All right, inside the chassis we have a motherboard that has what appears to be one, two, three four PCI slots and three ISA slots, which is excellent. It's exactly the vintage of computer that I wanted. The case has a built-in speaker. You can see here is the Pentium 166. Check out how small that fan is. Look how tiny that is. Now, this is an Intel chipset motherboard, so let's see if I can figure out exactly what we're talking about here in terms of what motherboard this is. All right, I don't see any markings 
that are clear on what motherboard this is. So I've taken a couple of pictures and I'll try to do some research and get back with you and hopefully I can figure out what type of board this actually is. But it looks like if, I don't know if you can see here, but right there, pardon me, I had the flashlight in my mouth. That brown slot is actually looks like a slot for a Pentium 2 slot 1. And I could be wrong, but that's what it looks like. Or it might be some type of add-on slot to add another card on. But I'm not sure which kind because that's definitely not an AGP slot because it's totally in the wrong place. Um, so it might be some type of add-on card if it's not a slot 2, or excuse me, a slot 1 for a Pentium 2. So this might be a hybrid motherboard that had the socket for the original Pentiums and then I'm thinking a slot here uh, for slot 1 Pentium 2s. So down inside here it has two 72 pin DIMMs right now which gives it 64 megabytes of RAM and there's two slots available for a total of 128 did I say gigabytes? 64 megabytes, and it has a total of 128 megabytes. Now the power supply looks like it's a Kingstar model KC250W, so it is a 250 watt power supply. We do have a 56K modem, but I, I really doubt I'll ever be using the 56K modem in this particular unit. And then it has a S3 Verge video card right here. Now you can see cable management isn't all that great, and this case does not allow an additional fan in it. So I'll have to figure out if I want to put a fan somewhere. I probably could figure something out. Um, I really doubt I will. I like to keep things as original as possible. All right, with the vintage Pentium 166 in place and next to it my AMD Phenom 2X6, which is going to be used in the future. We're going to use that system to do testing with different Linux systems. We now have included with the vintage Pentium a sidewinder no excuse me a wingman wire joystick and it also came with a small dell flat screen some dell speakers a keyboard and a mouse so let's go ahead and fire it up and hope it still boots up you know how computers are when you move them we get the happy one beep guess i should turn the monitor on Guess I should plug in the monitor one minute. Okay, at boot up, we get a CPU, which is a Pentium MMX, 166 megahertz. Base memory 640K, extended memory 65 megabytes. It's running a about six and a half gigabyte LBA mode four hard drive. Has a CD-ROM running in mode four. EDO RAM at rows two and three. And of course it has two serial ports like we talked about. And you can see that we have the IDE controller, the serial bus controller and display controller. And there is a program called Boot Magic, which is just starting to boot up. I'll hit Control C on the keyboard and we'll see it come up. And we have two choices. We've got Windows 98 SE or DOS 6.22 and Windows 3.11. So if I press Enter, you'll see that it starts MS DOS, it loads the creative plug and play config manager for the Vibra 16 plug and play card which is great because I'm actually going to need those drivers for a 46DX266 project I'm working on and down here of course it also loaded MSC deck so I will be able to install my games so 
on this computer. He's included a few games in DOS, a few games in Windows 3.11, and a couple games in Windows 98. So if I change directory to games, I've got Heretic and Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which I have never played. So if I change directory to one of my all-time favorite games, Heretic. We can load it up. And of course, being a vintage DOS game, it doesn't have any super fancy 3D graphics with some of the 3D cards that we have today. I'm guessing that the video card in here, the S3 Verge, is maybe a one megabyte card or two megabytes at most. Sound card's working great. I can't wait to put Quake on here and put Duke Nukem on here, one of my other favorite games. Now I do want to take a look at Hitchhikers. Do I want color? Yes I do. I love it. It's an all text game. Now this is something I haven't played in a long, long time. <laughs> so actually let me turn the light on. I've never played this game before, but I'm a fan of the Zork game, so it's something I will definitely be able to get used to and work through. Uh, let's see if it will let me quit. So I'm going to leave the game. And whoops. Don't need to type exit now, do I? I have to remember the forward slashes, too much Linux time. So I'm going to go ahead and run Windows. Now, he has a hilarious program running that makes all kinds of sounds. That one, of course, is the typical Windows sound. I'll turn the sound up a little bit so you can hear it. Maximize. Let's see what it does when we minimize. Minimize. Restore. So the program that is installed is called Icon Hear It. So anything you open, like let's say we open accessories, it has a sound effect that actually comes with it, which I think is pretty funny. Restore. Eventually I'll be doing network setup, but not right now, so let's close that. Minimize. And what I need to know with this particular setup Minimize. here is whether or not the graphics driver has been installed. So we're going to go into control panel here. It's been a while since I've done this. <laughs> I don't know if you just heard that scream, that's pretty funny. Uh, we can put a pattern on here, we can put a picture of course, but I'm not really worried about that right now. Okay, right now display is VGA. Let's see if we can even select, no we can't. So one of the things I'm gonna have to do before we get started here is, I mean, I'm assuming it wouldn't run on Super VGA. 256 colors. 
I hate to even try it. I think I would rather just get the S3 Verge driver. Reason being, of course, um, if it doesn't work, it's going to be a pain in the butt to fix. So right now it's running in VG VGA. It's one of the good things about Windows 95B and up is if you click OK and make a mistake, it will switch back to the previous resolution and fix it for you. But I really think we want to put in the official driver. Close. Minimize. So let's have a let's look at the party. games. The usual Solitaire, Minesweepers, Hearts. Minimize. Close. And looks like there aren't too many games in here, but I have several to install anyway. Now I'm trying to hide the putt putt game because I don't want my wife to see it, but let's have a look at what the requirements are. So the requirements for putt putt are 33 megahertz, 386 with 4 megabytes of RAM and SVGA at 640 by 40 and 256 color graphics, Windows 3.1 or higher, sound card, double speed, CD-ROM. So I do need at least SVGA. Hmm. Now I really do wonder if this would be able to run SVGA. Let's go back into main. Should we give it a try? Will I regret this if I do it? I really think it's going to be okay. Let's do Super VGA, 800 by 600, 256 colors, and small fonts. Okay. We'll use the current, and we will restart Windows and hope we didn't just screw everything up. An error occurred while trying to initialize the video adapter. <laughs> I guess that answers my question. So can Windows run at all? Nope, we broke it. So I guess we have to engage my excellent hacking skills, not. Uh, I'm thinking it's in system.ini. You know, if I'd been smart, I would have backed that up before I even got started. Whoops, wrong file, doesn't exist. Oops. Okay, so here it says display driver SVGA 256. I'm pretty sure what I'm looking for is just VGA.DRV. And I can make a quick check of that by changing directory to system and doing a directory of star.drv with a forward slash p. And you can see the driver there, vga.drv. So we're going to try to run Windows again and see what happens. All right, we're back in business again. So I'm going to have to find that S3 uh, Verge and get it working again. <laughs> so here I am back in the DOS prompt. I think what I'll do is uh, copy system.ini to system.mrk and copy win.ini to win.mrk. So from time immemorial, whenever I created backups, I would always call them a .mrk file. And this was just so I knew it was me who created the backup, whether it was in Linux or whatever. So now I did definitely back up those two files so I don't have to worry about them getting destroyed. I think what I need to do now is go onto a newer computer and see if I can find a driver for this computer to be able to run the games that I want to set up for my wife. So I'm going to see if I can get that done now. So I'll be right back.
Okay, so I am back in DOS 622. I'm going to make a directory called drivers. X copy a colon backslash star dot star to C colon backslash. I'll just do it the long way. You know me in the command line, I just can't avoid it. There's probably a way to do it in Windows 3.11, but... <sighs> well, I was raised on the DOS command line, so my first computer did not even have uh, Windows on it. It was an 8088 computer. We always have a backup if we need it, right? This way I have the drivers if I ever need them in the future. So we will do other. Okay. All right, this is more like it. I think this is a two megabyte video card. So I could do 640 by 480, 16 million colors. Wow, it can do 16.7 million with small fonts. Let's give it a try. Okay. Okay. Will it work? You know, probably not, but hey, we tried. Dudes, I think it worked. That's 800 by 600 if ever I saw it. All right. We have but one last thing to do. Whoops, not that one. That's to install Putt-Putt. And I'm going to get that Verge driver for the Windows 98 as well. And then we'll put Sims 2 Double Deluxe on there as well. But let's see if we can get this Putt-Putt to install. CD is in. Yep, it spun up. Start Winders, huh? All right, we'll do our restart of Windows and we'll launch Pot Pot Goes to the Moon and see if we got it. So it's doing a display resolution test and optimal display performance. Kind of a strange program, but I suppose it works. It's not using the disk right now. All right, it's doing a CD-ROM test. Ooh. We are testing your CD-ROM drive speed. It may take several minutes depending on your CD-ROM drive. This test will only be done once. All right. We're in business. Definitely not my kind of game, but it's nostalgic for my wife, so I thought she'd really enjoy that. Up next. We're going to install Sims 2 Double Deluxe, but before we do that, I'm going to go get the Windows 98 driver 
and I will install the S3 Verge video card for Windows 98 driver. All right, folks, we're back in Windows 98, and I have a driver disk. Let's see if we can get some wholesome 16 million color goodness. Luckily, I have another computer running Windows 7 that's also on the network and can get on the Internet, or this would be a little bit difficult. Now, I did order a USB floppy drive, so that's going to help things out quite a bit. All right, so we definitely have a driver, but I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back in there, and I'm going to change the folder options here to show all files and we'll have only one setting and we're going to take these files you know how I like to move them off a of floppy drive right away and I've got Windows 98 here and we'll do new folder uh, let's see drivers new folder s3 and we'll plop those drivers in there I'm thinking this should work pretty good if it does I'll throw sims in there and then just for kicks and giggles, I might try to put Pup Pup Moon on there too so she can have both of the games in Windows 98. I like Windows 3.1 for the nostalgia, but Windows 98, I know that I can um, basically use all the features and functionality very similar to modern Windows. So it makes my life a lot easier. Wizard searches for updated drivers. We'll select the one we want. It's interesting that they have a whole bunch of drivers here. Now this one's pretty old. It doesn't seem to be working. So I do have the disk. And I could just use the one off of A, but I don't want it to call for it all the time if I ever have to do a reinstall. So... I will go to the folder where I put it on the C drive. I'm going to try it anyway. Figure the worst that will happen is it doesn't boot up. All right, we'll restart and hope for the best. Look at that. High color mode. I can tell just by looking at the tint of green on the screen. All right, let's go into properties. It's already running in 256 color. We'll set it for true color. Now come to think of it, if I do go to... Wow, I can actually go up to 1024 if I want, but... What's my maximum color? Really? Let's find out. Now why is it saying... Oh, it can go up to 1280 by 1024, but it can't do 1024 by 768? Okay, it's Windows 98, so it should come back, and it did. Um, I'm wondering if it has to do with the refresh rate. So we have an adapter to fault. We'll try 60 hertz. For right now, I'll keep this setting, and then I'm going to go to... Okay, and let's see if it will do 1024 now. It will, but that's so tiny, I don't think I would really like that. I mean, yes, it works, but I think for my tired eyes, 800 by 600 is probably ideal. Next, we're going to install Sims 2 Double Deluxe.
Uh oh, we ran into a problem. I don't have the manual. And I don't see the code on the back of the case. All right, well, a quick internet search later. And this is one of the codes that came up. Now, somebody else commented that it actually did work, but they thought that somebody was trolling. And I can see why. If you can see this last three groups here, fighting for fun. Curious. I think maybe somebody was watching Fight Club too many times. Well, we got a little problem. It actually wants to do an installation that is 4.4 gigabytes. So, I got a little bit of work to do if we're going to do that on this drive. All right, well, if we do a display of our partitions, we can see that I won't be making any partition changes to this drive. So, this partition number three here is my Windows 98 setup. Partition number two, which is an extended DOS partition, if I click yes here to go look at it, it's actually a storage partition, and I'll do escape and go back into four again. This non-DOS partition, I suspect, is probably actually my DOS 6.22 and Windows 3.11. I'm not sure why it's showing up as non-DOS, but there's also the bootloader, so I really don't want to disturb the bootloader and risk deleting something, so I'm going to leave it well enough alone. And I do have some 40 gigabyte drives, and I have a bootable CD-ROM with Ghost on it. So I could use Symantec Norton Ghost and go ahead and basically make a copy of the hard drive and expand it up onto the 40 gigabyte drive. And then I could, at that time, make this partition 20 or 30 gigabytes, which would be much, much larger for some of the games that I want to play on here. We're going to do a quick restart. We'll go into DOS and we'll run FDisk in DOS and see, have a look at what it sees. Okay, so a quick FDisk and display partition information. Now this one makes a lot of sense to me actually. So this one right here, primary DOS, that one is definitely that partition one, even though it was saying before it was unreadable. It is a FAT16, which is my 6.22 DOS and Windows 3.11. And then this EXT DOS is a 2 gigabyte FAT16 partition that both versions of Windows can see. And then, of course, non-DOS is my Windows 98 partition. All right, well, I think that's about it for today. I'm pretty geeked. We've got that vintage Pentium 166 computer all set up. We've got the video drivers working for both Windows 98 and Windows 3.11. Next target on my list is to get a network card in here and get this thing on my network because if I was going to do an actual backup of it using Ghost, I could send it to my modern Linux system because, of course, I've got a Samba install all set up over the network on my Linux system. And I could use Ghost just to boot it off the CD and make an image over the network. So my next goal is to get an Intel uh, 10100 PCI card, which will work really well for me. And make a backup, and then what I think I'll try and do is put a 40 gigabyte IDE drive in and go ahead and do a restore and restore it to that larger drive so I can make that FAT32 per partition way larger so that I can get more games on here for my wife. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time on Fast Gadgets. This video was made possible with support from viewers like you. If you find this video useful, consider becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a month at patreon.com forward slash fast gadgets.